So now you might think, okay, that looks cool. I like the idea of doing that. I want to try that myself. How do I do it? So what I always do when I'm doing the deform rigging is I like to just always set up the hierarchy the way I would set it up without any deforms in it first. Um, and you might end up getting an extra peg somewhere. Like in this case, I have an extra peg on the leg. And that's okay. I can just go you know, and remove it afterwards if I don't need it and just get rid of it. Um, but generally, the way that I have things set up here, I have the hips. Um, so I have the hips layer as a, as a drawing layer, and I have a hips peg that allows me to rotate the hips all by itself without affecting the legs, because it's important to be able to do that. Otherwise, every time you move the hips, it's going to move the legs too, and you don't want that. And then I have another hips peg that is the parent of the hips as well as the legs and the feet, so that when I need to, I can move these together as a whole group. Um, and then I have the hips. Instead of having the hips parented to the chest, I have the hips and the chest as two independent elements, and I have them both connected to the master peg. Um, this wouldn't work very well when you're using the IK tool, because the IK tool wants everything to go sequentially down. But in fact, I kind of like the way that this works when they're separate. It's easier to animate, in my opinion. And um, to, in, in, you know, it's just a personal preference, but I find that with the deform tool, you don't really need to have IK because of the fact that you can stick the feet in a different way. Um, and in fact, I find it easier to animate using FK with the different swapped out rigs um, than I do using the IK with, without deform. But, you know, I mean, as I said, it's a personal preference. It's what you're used to and, and what you can play around with. Um, so then what I'll do is when I'm ready to set the rig, I'll do the rig on this back leg. First, I'll just select the leg. Um, you can select it with your transform tool, or you can click on the node in your network. Just make sure that you have the leg itself selected, the TVG layer, not the peg layer. And then we can go into our deform tool, our rigging tool. So I'll select the rigging tool, and I'll go into setup mode. And first, I'll set up my top-down rig. And I always set up the top-down rig first because um, if I set the top-down rig first on this leg, I also want to set it first on this leg so that when I go back to animate it later, I always know my top-down rig is first, and then my second rig is going to be the bottom-up rig. Um, it's just easier to be consistent that way. So then I can just click, click, click to create my bone-style deformer on this. And now I've got a deformer on the first leg. So I can double check it by going, leaving setup mode and um, taking my transform tool. And I can see that this is rotating pretty well here. Now the foot isn't coming along with it. So there is a step after you do that that will allow you to move the foot with it. So this is where I got my extra peg layer here. Um, but first what I'll do is I'll just connect the foot into here. You, you can theoretically connect the foot directly into that deform, but um, it's not a good idea to do that because of the fact that um, when you have something connected directly to the base of that, the foot will not only move with the deform of the leg, it will also deform with the leg. And you kind of want the foot's position to follow the position of the deformed leg, but you don't want the foot itself to deform as well. So to avoid that, what we have is we have the ability to select our deform here, and then we can create a kinematic output. And what this does is it creates a second port. Uh, I'll just mouse over that again so you can see where that is, create kinematic output. And it creates a second port now, and we can just connect that port down to the foot. So now you can see that I've got an extra peg layer here that I don't need, so I can just hold down Alt, slide it out, hit Delete to remove it. So now what I have is I have a deform on this leg layer. So first I get the I get the first deform set up the way that I like it, and I go back and I double check and I make sure it's going to work just fine. And once I have the first one working, then what I can do is I can select my leg layer again. I'll just move over to the second frame to do it on the second frame, but you can do it again on the first frame. It doesn't really matter what frame you're on. But I just moved over to the second frame. I'll select the same leg layer as before, and then I'll duplicate the drawing. And what happens when you duplicate the drawing is that it's going to create a new rig by default. And this is one of those things that's set up in your preferences. Um, let's just see here if we can figure out deformation. So in the deformation tab of your preferences, by default, it has this option checked on create pose deformer. 
And what opposed deformer means is um, it's every time you swap or create a new drawing, it will allow you to create, or it will create automatically a new rig for that. So in other words, I'll show you here. When I select the leg layer and I duplicate the drawing, watch the rig. I duplicate the drawing and the rig disappears. The rig disappears because I've created a new drawing and so therefore it's setting me up to create a new rig. So all I have to do to actually create the new rig is go into my rigging tool, go into setup mode. And now I can start creating this rig and I'm going to create it from the bottom up this time. So I can click down here, I'll click again in the center, and then I'll click at the top. And so I can double check this rig, I'll leave setup mode, I'll turn on my transform tool. And now instead of moving the bottom of the rig, I'm just going to move the top of the rig here. So I can set this guy up. And then maybe I want to go up here and animate this hip up again. And uh, just see how that works. Whoa! Cool. Okay, so I've got my top down rig, I've got my bottom up rig. Just for fun, I'll just show you how we can do also a curve. So I'll select the leg and I'll duplicate the drawing again go back into rigging tool setup mode. If you want to do a curve instead, you can just drag up and then drag back down and go to the transform tool, turn off rigging um, setup mode, and now you can play around with animating that from the bottom up. So the curve style seems a bit easier to animate, but it's just that you know you have that possibility of going off model with it. If you have really bendy legs, of course the curve is, is the way to go, um, but if you don't have bendy legs, then it's probably a better idea to go with the bone just to keep it a bit more rigid and on model. So that's it. Now, as you're animating, you know, at any point in time, you, I've done a few frames of animation on this guy, kind of just wiggling his hips around. But um, at any point in time, I can, like, let's say I've got these two solidified here. He's rotating his hips, and then he's solidified down here and I want to kick the leg out. So on the next frame over, what I'll do is I'll select the, um, you know, the, the drawing. I'm selecting the actual TVG here. And I can swap the drawing back to the top-down rig, and then I can rotate the top-down rig now from the top again. So I'll just um, you know, select that, rotate it out, and now he's kicking his leg out. So actually, I put those two right next to each other. So you know, I might just want to... I think what I would want to do here is I probably first want to swap the rig out. Let me think about how the best way is to do this. You might want to swap the rig out and do a slight movement on it where it's kind of in the same position but you know, but but a little bit different. And um, now this is a very good way of you seeing how I've gone off model already. I've gone off model with that curve style deformer because when I had the curve style, I kind of made his leg longer, um, which doesn't match up very well with that with the actual leg. So I'll just make this curve deformer match a little bit better. What's going on there? So I can swap out the rig here, and then I can go. Let's just create a keyframe on everything with F6. I go a few frames later, and now I can kick the leg out, and maybe I even want to give a little bit of um, a little hyper extension there on the leg as he kicks it out. So, poof. So at any point in time, you can switch, and this is the stuff that I did before um, that doesn't work, but ignore the stuff that I did before. And so then when we look out here at the, at the good stuff where the feet are planted, you can switch from the planted to the, um, the top-down rig at any point in time. So hopefully that gives you guys a few ideas of what you can do. Um, this is just something I think that you should play around with. So just start out by creating the different rigs on your legs. You don't really need um, this t type of rig on the arms. You can get away with having only one rig on the arms, but it's really on the legs where you need to have two. You don't need to have three, you just need to have two, but you can decide whether you want to do bone style or curve style. And so create the two different, create the top down and create the bottom up and then play around with swapping them out and animating with them and see if that in any way helps with the animation when you want to stick the feet. I definitely think it does, but it's just my personal opinion.